Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to the continuation, forgive me for the noise, minute, of Ella and Alec. The next chapter, you're not going to like. I know I am not a lover of it. It's pretty horrendous, but let's continue. Alec, 6.08am. I pace in the empty boardroom of the Le Charm building. As of this moment, it's just me, the grandfather clock on an empty table. Lifting my phone, I recheck the text from Ella. Call me, Ella. Can we meet at 6 Le Charm boardroom? Magic man. Sure, see you there. Now Ella is only nine minutes late. But she's also been stalked by enchanted humans. I'm not the kind of warlock who wants to wait around and assumes that the love of his life is fine. I type a quick reply. Magic man, are you okay? I hit send and wait. As sadly, the screen comes back with a big red exclamation mark of failure. It's easy to see why. There's no signal in this building. Part of me wants to chuck my phone out the window. After all, this is one of many reasons why I wanted to fix a contract with the World Wide Web before signing. We have total crap for internet and phone. I check the clock again. Ella is now ten minutes late. I decide to give it till 7.15am. After that, I'm casting some major spells. As I always do in the boardroom, I strip off my sport coat, set it on the back of the chair, and try to get comfortable. It isn't easy. Ella, please be safe. The main door swings open, and I exhale at last. Ella has arrived. My heart lightens at the prospect of seeing her again. Only it's not Ella who walks through the door. Instead of my girlfriend. It's my parents who march into the room. Like always... They could be the cover models for a magazine called Rich White People Who Hate You. At the sight of this pair, my stomach tumbles while my brain freezes. I spent hours preparing for a very different morning. How did my parents get loose? Right now, that doesn't matter. If legend Amderia, that's not a good thing. A realisation appears. My parents must have been hiding in the outer hallway, waiting for me to do what I always do <clears throat> when I... Enter this stuffy boardroom. Set my sport coat onto the back of my chair. Once that was done, they swept into the chamber. There can only be one reason why. Once my jacket is out of reach, so are my magical gemstones. <clears throat> Turning, I lunge for my sport coat. But legend is too fast for me. He already has a magical rock of his own. Grasped in his face. White light bursts from between his fingers. One moment, my jacket sits on the back of the chair. The next, it's gripped in legend's hand. My mind races through scenarios. I could try to run... My parents are blocking the door. I'm no gemstones to use and fight them. Also, my phone is dead. Which leaves one final option. I can try to talk myself out of this. So what do we do now? I ask Legend Grins. Why, chat with the chairman, of course. The Duke enters the room. A copy of the infamous Black Binder is cradled in his arms. He sets the item onto the tabletop with a thunk. I brought another one for you to sign. The Duke pats the binder like it's his kitten. Everything about the glass of the ball is in here. He pulls another quill pen from the folds of his suit coat and sets it beside the binder. With your parents around to explain, I'm sure you'll sign this right away. In this moment, two facts become clear. First, it's a good thing Hella hasn't arrived. There are some parts of my messy life she just doesn't need to see. The second, there is no way I'm signing that pile of trash. When I next speak, my voice carries the edge of frustration. I still have questions, chairman. And your parents will answer them all, counters the Duke. And please, don't take this as a personal betrayal. It's only business. The Duke stares at me with his milky eyes. I think he's actually waiting for me to forgive him. Let's just say I'm not in the mood. Pack up your desk. You're out of here. The Duke gives me an indulgent smile. How quaint. He returns to my parents, thank you for coming here and explaining things to the boy. I know you'll get the binder signed today. The Duke lumbers off, careful to close the door behind him. My parents step deeper into the chamber. Up close, I can see they haven't changed a bit. Legend is all blonde, blue eyes and irresistible charm. Diamond has even features, long brown hair and a dancer's grace. But seeing them again sends waves of revulsion moving through me. How many hours did I spend floating in magical space while their spells tried to brainwash me? Far too long. And now they're free. The air becomes charged with power. 
Darkness creeps into the corners of the room. Outside the wall of the window, shadows slide over the city. Ever so subtly, the sun transforms into a yellow harvest moon. This is something viewers won't be able to detect. But as a member of the Magic Horum, I can't miss it. It all adds up to one conclusion. My parents didn't escape Fairylands without help. And there's only one hell for wheeled magic that stems from both darkness and the moon. Now Adele. Is she the one who's behind my parents' escape? One way to find out. No, Adele should never have set you two loose, I declare. Then I wait for their reaction. Legend's eyes widen. He hides his surprise quickly enough, but I still caught it in his look. That's not true, says Legend. We don't even know now, Adele. Don't bother lying, I counter. Your expression just confirmed everything. Fine, says Diamond. No, Adele did help us. How do you know about the elves? asks Legend. You must have your allies in the fairy lands. As a matter of fact, I do. I fold my arms over my chest. You know one of them very well, Colonel Mallory the Magnificent. He won't be happy that Maladel set you free. The Colonel is super protective of Ella, and by extension, he looks out for my welfare too. Legend chuckles. <laughs> then it's such a shame that the Colonel is off on a wild goose chase. You and Della are totally alone here, son. There will be no help coming to you, whether it's from the Colonel Knox or Briar Rose. Even the Queen of Hearts is out of range. My thoughts wheel through the news. A single fact becomes clear. Now Adele lured our friends off onto this mysterious quest, didn't she? She wants to remove anyone who could help me and Ella. Quite right, confirms Diamond. Well, Adele is an excellent planner. She set schemes with schemes. <laughs> a realisation slams into me. Ella didn't text me this morning. I'm afraid not, says Legend with mock sadness. That was all my idea. I control your phone with a special app built for me by World Web. Anger heats my blood. I glance at my phone on the conference room table. With every corner of my being, I want to grab the thing and chuck it at Legend's face. Still, I keep my temper in check. It's time to focus on why this is happening. The binder on the table is a top big giveaway. This is all about the glass of the ball, I declare. Now Adele wants Ella there. Why? My parents share along a meaningful look. It's Diamond who breaks the silence. I'm sure we don't know. What a lie. The wheels of my mind spin even faster. I'm the warden of witch and wizard magic. Ella is the warden of fae power. That's why the colonel took her wings when she was a baby. It was to hide Ella away from those who would try to steal her magic. Now it's my parents who are helping those who wish to hurt Ella. Protective energy streams through my limbs. A single thought echoes through my soul. Defend Ella. Listen to me, I demand. Now Adele is wrong about Ella having tons of power. Much of Ella's magic was recently released through the pyramids. If the colonel hadn't got tricked into leaving, he could explain everything right now. Legend chuckles. You mean Ella's powers as a warden. He takes everything in me not to stagger backward. You knew about that? I must admit, says Legend. The tracker that World Web put on your phone is rather shoddy. Even so, it was enough for me to figure out who Ella and what Ella truly was. That there's a warden of magic. Sadly, I also know she recently lost the best of her powers. And I certainly told Nat Adele all about that. But now Adele is convinced that your Ella is filled with some important stuff. It's not our place to correct an elf, as Diamond. Once more, my parents share a, a long look. The best way to describe the expression between them is with one word, smug. Facts about now Adele spin through my mind. The Fairylands are made of hundreds of fiefdoms. Always little realms consider themselves to be king and queens of something or other. In each fiefdom, the powers, well, some in pairs... It doesn't take long to figure out what the mistress of Moonshadow would want with Ella. Now Adele's fiefdom doesn't have an opposite. That's not true, exclaims Diamond. It's public knowledge, I counter. Just so, Magiweb, everyone knows that now Adele is the mistress of Moonshadow. But she doesn't have a mistress of Moonbeams to balance her out. Now Adele is less powerful without an opposite. I rub my neck as I think things through. Now Adele must think Ella has the power of the Mistress of Moonbeams. A charged silence fills the room. 
That's as good as my parents saying, yes, now nah, Adele, the mistress of moon shadow, thinks Ella is the mistress of moonbeams. My eyes widen. The glass of the ball has nothing to do with boosting sales for the charm. Now nah, Adele is making you hold it in order to lure in Hella. Jacoby is bait, and the stalker humans are extra inspiration, all to get Ella to attend. Then once Ella's there, now nah, Adele will magically drain her. Legend chuckles <laughs> every so often. I see a little bit of a natural brilliance in you. Yes, Nardell wants to take Ella's magic. It's a very tricky spell and must be done both on Earth and in Fairylands. Indeed. That's the whole reason for the glass of the ball. It's so silly, adds Diamond. Ella simply can't be the mistress of moonbeams. But Nardell insists that's the truth. Ella carries some kind of magical signature. Blah, blah, blah. And since the mistress of moonbeams promised to set us loose, we agreed to help her. No matter how stupid it all sounds. Legend shoots me at hang- and I- shoots an angry look at Diamond. Hush! I scan the darkened room with my eyes. She's in the room, isn't she? My parents don't reply. Again, that's essentially a confirmation of the truth. When I next speak, I take care to raise my voice. Why don't you step forward, now Adele? Long seconds tick by before a figure materialises from the shadows. Even before I see a face, I know the truth. Now Adele is right here. Oh, outside of Jacobi, I haven't met any elf royalty before. Now Adele wears an elaborate red gown with armoured breastplate. Her skin is almost pure white. Hmm, has several loops of hair atop her head. Both her ears and eyebrows are so pointed and long they remind me of an antennae. Yet that's not the most elf-like thing about her. Now Adele stares at me in a way that suggests I'm prey. Typical. Now Adele inhales deeply. Ella's stench is on you. It's so faint, yet I still scent the power of moonbeams. I tilt my head confused. I spent hours with Ella last night. Why would the scent of her power be faint? Well, whatever the reason, it doesn't change the big danger here. Now Adele is targeting Ella. That needs to end now. Leave Ella alone, I declare. Why should I? asked Nat Adele. Can't you see? What a great chance this is. Look at your friend Jacobi. His fiefdom wields power of fortitude and is offset by the realm of minuscule. Both sides want to drain the other, yet. The most they can do is sip a little power when the other isn't looking. But Ella, she brims with magic and has no idea how to protect herself. I can drain her and become the greatest force in all the fairylands. Who wouldn't want that? I scan her carefully. Now Adele is clearly clever. Then again, all living elf royalty must be smart to survive. So why is she babbling all the strategy to me? You need me to sign the contract, don't you? Now Adele arches the brows. The Lachon Company is um, tied to a set of ancient spells. Once you became CEO, that magic demands you must approve certain changes. <clears throat> My eyes widen. <clears throat> That's why you're making changes to the stage at the Owl Centre. You must connect the worlds of fairy and earth in order to enact your draining spell. Quite right. Now Adele looks to legend. You misspoke before. This boy is smarter than either of you. I sought through everything I know of draining spells. My parents are correct about one thing. Ella is not the mistress of moonbeams. Whatever spell you cast on her won't drain anything of value. You'll only end up killing her. Now Adele shrugs. And why would I care about that? I step closer. Because you're here to persuade me to sign that binder. Let me guess. Next you'll offer what I most want in the world. Maybe you even think it will be power or my freedom. Just as it was with my parents. <gasps> Clever again, says Nat Adele. But it was your parents who were supposed to get you to sign that binder. I'm here with another offer. Tie yourself to me magically. Then I can approve anything without 
consulting you again. I give you two choices. One, you may join my men's harem as a lower level husband. Two, I imprison you for eternity in a way that makes you part of me. The emphasis, to emphasize a point, not a dull, taps the jewel necklace around her throat. As a widow, wizard, I know a lot about gemstones. That one is packed with power and could be used as a magical dungeon. What do you say? Asked Nata Del. I choose a prison. Nata Del chuckles. <laughs> you can't be serious. You're asking me to marry you. That's something which can never be undone and my heart belongs to someone else. So go ahead. Lock me up because I know one thing. Ella will find me and set me loose. Then together we'll take you down. If prison is what you want, I will place you there. You promised to marry Alec, says Diamond. You gave your word. Not a doll waves her hand dismissively. That's worth nothing. If you want anything from a fae, you ask for a binding vow. Diamond lifts the chin. You're the true stupid one. Here you go, making all this fuss for a little slut with barely any magic. A long pause follows. A heavy air of anticipation fills the room. Everyone knows that Mother has said too much, with the possible exception of Diamond herself. I don't like you, states Nat Adele. She snaps her fingers. Cords of shadow whip out from the corners of the room. Moving in unison, they stab Diamond through a dozen paces at once. My mother falls over, dead. Sadness presses in around me. Between my two parents, I was far closer to Diamond. And whatever her faults, Diamond isn't, didn't deserve to die. Such a shame, announces Nat Adele. Now, only two men remain to entertain me. Who should I destroy next? Legend crumples to his knees. I'm your loyal ally. Please don't hurt me. Now Adele turns to me. Looks like you've been betrayed again. And what? Do you say to that? I lean against the wall, hitching my right ankle over my left. I say that's as much as you enjoy toying with prey. It doesn't impress me. I won't fall down like legend. We'll see. Raising her arms, now Adele sends a wave of power that slams into me. Pain sings through every nerve ending in my body. I sense myself twisting and folding as I enter an ethereal, darkened space. As my world fades to nothingness, I cling to a final thought. I will see Ella again. Oh, you see how sad it is, guys? I just can't. It's awful. I just can't. Unbearable. What is wrong with his bloody parents, guys? Oh, thanks for listening to this episode. Many blessings.